Hi, y'all. Megan here from Romance by the Book with the lovely Marielle. Hello. And this is week two for November's book of the month, Banana Pants by Penny Reed. Ah, we are reading chapters 13 through 24, and we ended with a bang. Well, yes. a frisk and a kiss and uh, a yes. walking away. And a very sad face. <laughs> yes. So we pick up here with Desmond pretty much right after she's left. He calls his sister for some advice. He, he asked, walked away and yeah. he was like, I was going to walk her out. I had a car waiting. Yeah. But that kiss like wiped his, his yeah. brain. And he, <laughs> by the time he realizes she's, she's gone. She's gone. Yeah. And thankfully, you know, his car, his guy with the car was out there and, you know, they got her where she needed to go. So he calls his sister Nat for advice. He asks, what does it mean if a woman kisses you? And she's like, I what, have follow-up questions. <laughs> yeah. So she's like, I have follow-up questions. So she's like, did, so she initiated it? And he's like, yes. And he was like, she was like, and you were alone together at the time? And he's like, yes. And then she asks him a few other things. And from his answers, she deduces that it was Ava that he was kissing. And he's like, God damn it. This is why I don't call my sister because she but knows too she much. she is also <laughs> like, dang it, the group chat, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, the what? The group chat? Yeah. He's like, this is why I don't talk to you. So um, she tells him Ava doesn't kiss lightly. The Ava doesn't kiss people lightly is what she says to him. And he's very like, well, she's been, she's dated a bunch of people. And he's like, and she's like. And she's like, no. And she's like, listen, I cannot break girl code and say more unless you tell me, number one, what, what your, intentions your intentions are. And number two, why did you cut her out 10 years ago? And it better be good, basically. She's like, it better not be that romance some, novel. She's not, bullshit, I'm not yes. good enough for her, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. And I was yes. like, ooh, because I'm pretty sure that is perfect. right. So um, he basically says to her, he's like, you know, you were there. I was a mess. My bipolar was not under control. I was basing my whole world around her and it was dangerous. Like it wasn't fair to her. It wasn't fair to me. Like um, he talks to her uh, um, content warning for um, like suicidal ideation and depression. Yes. And also attempt. Um, and so when he was a teenager, two times he attempted suicide. His sister does know about that. Ava does not know about it. And he doesn't want her to because he feels like she will feel responsible and she is not responsible and it has nothing she could have done to fix it basically. Yeah. So, and he says to her, like, I, she was my world and that was dangerous. Like I had to be on my own and find a reason to live that wasn't about her. Like it had to be about me. And, he, and so it was kind of an, I wasn't good enough, but it was more of, I could not get myself straight if yeah. I had a reason in her right to be like, to, to like hang on to. And so he needed yeah. to like, well, and he's her. like, and I had to be brutal because otherwise she never would have accepted it. She would have just continued to try to like reach me, you know? And he's like, he it was selfish. His sister that he said some things that were like hurtful and he yeah. pushed her away like in a very strong. So when, yeah. when we recall her saying like, oh, he said he didn't want right. to know me. He said he, he said did that. not want to know her anymore. He said that because he knew that would make her stop. Like it would make her let him go. Yeah. And he says like, it was selfish and it was not fair to her. But if I hadn't done it, I might not be here now. Like I, ha it's what I had to do. And, um, and at 15, she's like, and at this point she's like, well, why haven't you told her that? Like things have been good for years, years now, like do yeah. something, you know? And he's like, well, I didn't tell her at the time because at 15, I didn't really even have the words to explain what it was that I was trying to do. And also, um, like I've only really been like good for like five years. So like half the time that I've been gone. And by then it seemed like it was too late, basically. Also his mm -hmm. mom and his sister and his, and people in his and circle. people in his family. Had not yes. shied away from telling him like every time she was dating somebody or yes. with, 
And so he felt like she was living her best life. And he right. was like, who am I to come in and like start messing, messing around with that. that? And she's yes. like, I mean, that's not what was happening. And so, and so she's like, okay, I agree. This is sufficient. I will break girl code for you. So <laughs> she tells him about Ava dating a lot, but kissing very little. Um, and only after feelings have already been happening. Um, she also admits about more about the family group chat, which is funny. Um, and also about him and Ava and how much everybody wants to see them together because they feel like they belong together and have felt that way, even though they haven't spoken in 10 years. Um, and so. And had it, felt that way even from before, yeah. you know, before all the stuff happened and yeah. left. Um, and so she tells him she, cause he says to her, like, you know, I've never had a girlfriend before. Like I've had sex, but I haven't had a girlfriend. Like, I don't know how to be a, a dating person. Like, that's not a thing that yeah. I have any experience with. And they she's like, like, oh, you should tell her that. <laughs> of the same coin, right? Like yes. he slept with a bunch of people, but never like let himself have feelings for anyone. Yes. She is looking for like a situation where she can develop feelings, but that's not but really she, happened. Right. So and so therefore never... she hasn't slept with anyone. Yeah. And so his sister is like, oh, you should tell her that. Like, you should be vulnerable and like tell her, you know, about your, what you don't know and like ask for her help. You know, like girls love that shit, right? He is like, so, oh, and, and she's like, and you should also grovel, like for sure. And in his mind, he's going like, wow, this is terrible advice. And you're going like, no, actually it's pretty good. <laughs> He also, though, is like the people who I know who are the most in love are my parents and my father would never. And then he's like, oh, like, actually, I'm pretty sure. He... Actually, I've seen him grovel to my mom before. Never to anybody else, but definitely to her. Uh, and he's like, mm, I don't know about that. Like, he talks I will consider about it is yeah. basically what they end up uh, landing on. Yeah. Um. And so later, uh, Henry asks Des to ask his dad about a protection detail because after the debacle that happened at his office he doesn't trust his like security people anymore um but of course he doesn't say that because supposedly Des doesn't know about any of that um and of course Des's dad's company doesn't do like private security stuff anymore um but Des is like oh well, I'll ask him like I was going to see him today anyway kind of a thing and then uh Henry asks about Ava and Des kind of plays dumb and um and, and he's like we, oh i can ask should, about that too like mm, you know like <laughs> we should too also mention that like does in this context like he plays like a himbo like a himbo yeah people. so he's very like I don't like know. his I don't brain know. is his yeah. eyes are empty but his right. face is pretty yeah. and that's the the like persona that's that the persona plays. yeah so it's interesting to watch him <laughs> be so like I mean whatever you want sure. when he's clearly sure like the smartest person in the room yeah so um he goes over to his dad's office and Henry he he sees that somebody's tailing him so he's like it's been a few weeks since Henry had me followed like right on time right so he gets to his dad's office and also like he has a concern because Henry is Still interested in Ava, but now is kind of like, it is weird that she showed up that day and that guy took too. her. And I don't know if yeah. she went with him or if he, like, what the deal was there. Right. And, and she never called the cops or anything. So, like, that's another, like, thing that's up in the air. So he goes to see his dad. It does not go well. Um, As soon as he asks for a favor, his dad is like, is this about your job? And he's I like, will say yes. that, like, the like, tension. No. The tension started before he even like got in the yeah. room with him because he has a new secretary who, I mean, I don't know, new, new, right. but new from the last new 10 years. Him, yeah. <laughs> new Des, um, and she looks at him with what does, I mean, we're in his head. So yeah. whatever interpretations we have are from him, right. but he is like, she looks at him with pity. Like, obviously she is just like waiting to see if I'm going to like do something weird or fall apart. Yeah. Or, and I don't know if that's, well, and, and she it. says, like, I feel like I know you. And he's like, but you don't. Like, as kindly as he can, basically. And she's like, oh, of course you're right. I'm sorry. Like, I'll bring you into your dad's office. Like, it's very awkward. It's, like, yeah. Yeah. So he's already and, feeling some kind of way. And then he right. gets in there and his dad is very, like, He doesn't sit. Friendly. He's very, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so he won't even let Des explain anything. Like, if it's about his job, no, I'm not helping you. Like, 
the end. Uh, they argue his dad is very black and white about how Des breaks the law in his work. He doesn't, he doesn't like it. He thinks it's bullshit. And beneath um, him somehow, like he's, he is very yeah. much, he has that vibe of like, you, you are better than that. You this. can do better. Yeah. And, and he said, they argue about Des using his diagnosis as an excuse for his choices. Like he's like, you sound like your aunt Jem. Like y- there's plenty of other jobs you could have. Don't act like this is the only thing you can do. Like you're this, you're so smart. Like this is bullshit. Right. And, um, you could live, you know, a more normal life without committing crimes. Like you don't have to do this. This is not you know, the only thing you're capable of. Yeah. Even though he's kind of a Robin Hood situation, like he doesn't do right. bad things. Well, and I don't know people. if his dad even knows that much really. Um, but he doesn't like stop to let him explain or try yes, to figure it no. out. Like he is just kind of, like you said, very black and white. Yeah. And, and Des situation. kind of explains to him like, oh, I can be normal. Like, let me tell you all the ways that's worked out in the past. And he just enumerates all the things that he's gone through in the last 10 years. Anytime he tried to have a normal job and he had to be hospitalized or he went on a new medicine and things went wrong and he, you know, it's like nothing. He keep a schedule that was consistent enough for like a regular day job Yep. to be okay with. Um, and, uh, and it's very clear here that like everything has to always be his dad's way and Des is just can't do it. Um, uh, like they've obviously had this argument before. Yes, for sure. And, and I also, like, it just was so, it was tense in the most, like, frustrating Devi- and like, devastating way. Yep. It was so, it was sad, but also, like, so uncomfortable. And the fact yep. that that was his dad was, I was just like, oh, yep. this sucks. No wonder you haven't been here. Yeah. No wonder you only talked to your mom. Yeah. So, um, as he's about to leave, he tells him, like, ha- uh, Henry Whitford's going to call you and ask you to you know do security for him like if you could do me a favor and like tell him you need to think about it like don't tell him no right away like kind of keep him on the hook sort of thing and he's like no like he's like literally i'm not helping you with anything to do with any way no um and so when des is about to walk out the door he's He's like also very like you're working with that guy like right like that guy's even worse than the old hoodlum you worked for back in Brooklyn or, or in, in Boston. And he's like, oh, at least we agree on something. Like is what that says about that. Yeah. So as he's about to leave, his dad is like, listen, I'm working this weekend, so I won't be home. But like, you should go for dinner tomorrow and see your mom and sister. And he's like, I already, already saw mom plans. and I already am going to see her tomorrow. We're going to a play and dinner. And his dad looks shocked. Apparently mom has not been sharing info and we don't really know anything about that that as far as why that is or whatever but it is it surprises des that his mom has not been like telling his dad things and like the dad doesn't say but obviously his face says enough that yeah des is like oh okay apparently mom didn't say anything my bad so um when he leaves he goes to another part of the office to see alex green who works there for his dad um he was like a hacker or used to be a hacker ambiguous like he's helped um des out a lot including giving him the seed money for his company when he started and like helping him out with stuff and clients and like vouching for him and stuff like that so when he's He's almost like kind of tells him a bit what he's what he's doing for the job and um and the guy's like your dad reacted that way oh okay like that's weird yeah like (laughs) You're the old, like, he's not usually so black and white with other people. Like, he doesn't treat people that way. And Des is like, oh, lucky me. Um, And so actually, so really quickly, though, I have to say, before he gets into the office, he runs into this girl, 11-year-old girl yeah. named Viola, who is one of his Aunt Shelley's nieces from Tennessee. She's and, like, Winston. Clearly. <laughs> and based on her physical description and the things she talks about what her dad says, this is very clearly Cletus and Jen's daughter from the Winston brothers. And I was very tickled by that. So you guys have that to enjoy if you're, uh, if you're into that kind of thing. Um, so that was very cute, but yeah, so she, he's in the office. He's talking to Alex. Alex knows him very well and can see he hasn't eaten. He's like, you're not taking care of yourself. Like go to the fridge. There's some eggs and some whatever, like you need to eat food. And so and there is something in the way that he's acting, which is really interesting. He does, um, does like in his head is kind of like, yeah, I do get like, if I don't eat these things, like it doesn't help right. with his mental 
state and his condition yes. if he doesn't take care of himself and generally yeah. speaking he will like do certain things to like trigger himself to like right. remember to eat remember to sleep remember right but he has been kind of off off his schedule. game yeah um and so yeah he's like oh i've got some eggs in the fridge and he's just like well but he does need to eat something so yeah um, and so he he explains to Alex all the things that he w- wanted to tell his dad, um, you know, to get some advice or whatever. So um, later we're back with Ava and she's been very sad since everything happened with Des. She started crying for no reason, like full crying jag. And she like was very uh, like put out about it. And then the alarm went off on her phone to remind her about the Cubs game starting and so she decided she was going to get dressed and go watch it at a sports bar because she yeah. cannot sit in her apartment and cry. Like, this is not a thing she's going to continue to do. So she goes to this to watch the game. But these men keep coming up to her, like, out of the woodwork and, like, hitting on her. And she's extremely annoyed by this. <laughs> I It struck me that this girl, like, because she, her brain doesn't seem to work that way. Like, she yeah. does not realize really what's going on right away. Yeah. And so it's like people keep trying to buy her drinks, and she's like, "I don't drink. Like, why are you? Yeah, like but I don't she drink bought that a much. vodka drink that just so she could sit at the bar and not feel like weird. <laughs> like that's the only reason she doesn't really care about she's drinking. Like, it. please stop buying. Like, please stop talking to me. I'm yes, here to like watch leave the game. me alone. I want to watch the game. And so one man gets particularly annoying and assholeish, and before she can even respond, Des shows up. He starts talking about hemorrhoid cream and rashes and all kinds of ridiculous stuff and then introduces himself as her husband to the guy who immediately fucks off. He's like, oh, bye. (laughs) And so she has been drinking because she's been so annoyed by these people and she's been drinking the drink in front of her and it got refilled at one point. Um, And if, like you said, she doesn't normally drink. So like she's, her inhibitions are down. She's feeling good. Um, they're bantering and, you know, the liquor's starting to hit and she tells him that she wants him. And he's like, oh, fuck. and so next scene they're in the car, he's driving her to her parents' house and she's still hitting on him in the car and he's trying to be a good guy. And she, she's like, he, I want to ask you a favor. We were in her and when we are in his head, we realize like he it has been all in like he well obviously he talked to his sister which he wouldn't have been if he wasn't serious he really yes but he is like this girl is not in a condition to be making any kind of decisions no. i cannot do this and no she, in the meantime is like like oh she crawl just in your lap and keeps he's telling like, him things she's like i need a favor i want you to be my first i've never had sex with anyone because i always wanted my first time to be with you like she's and he's like i'm begging you please stop talking tell me tomorrow when you're sober like we cannot do this right now right also he's and, like she's gonna wake up and she's gonna want to crawl in a hole when she realizes that she's told me to yes up. and that doesn't work for me like i need to be able to see her and i want to talk to her but like not like this and so um they get to the house she unbuckles and jumps over into his lap and she's like listen if you're gonna reject me just leave me a text like leave me a voicemail or send me a text like i don't want to see you again if you're rejecting me, like every time I see you, I get my hopes up that you're going to stick around and things are going to be different. And like, I can't keep doing that. If you like, if you're rejecting me, then just tell me. But if you do want this, come see me first thing tomorrow, because the reason why I'm telling you this now is because tomorrow I'm going to talk myself out of it. If you don't come over and like make it happen, like I talk she's myself like, out of everything I'm fun. Be, I'm a coward like, now. That's what sober. she said to him. You don't know me anymore. I'm a coward now. Like, I talk myself out of everything good and fun that has any risk of embarrassment or regret. And I will do the same thing unless you come and make me not. Well, and And she is very, like, come by this, like, come by this time in the morning. It's like, it's not, it's not like any time. It's kind of like, if you wait until I've been awake for more than, like, three hours, I will have talked myself out of this. And And so then she starts crying. After she tells him that she's a coward and she talks herself out of everything fun, she starts crying. And she's like, promise me you won't let me talk myself out of it. Like, I want you to, like, make this happen, basically. And before he can agree, um, her mom knocks on the car window she's like um a neighbor called about a suspicious car uh are y'all done or do you need another minute <laughs> basically 
and his her dad's in the background like hey leave him alone maybe we'll finally get a grandchild <laughs> it's hilarious and he is just like oh oh no mrs so mrs Archer, could we have a cover? And he, yeah, so and her dad, so Ava's dad takes her inside and her mom stays out there to talk to him. And she, he's not really sure, like her reaction, like he brings Ava home. She's drunk. Like he's like, God, she's going to hate me. And she says, it's really good to see you. Um, And we, we love so you. Scrupulously polite. Yes. And he's like, she's like, dad. Like, no. She's like, we love you. We would love for you to visit anytime or take out Ava out anytime. Like, we are here for it, basically. And she kind of explains that, like, we think you're amazing and we'd be thrilled to have you in our lives a lot more than you are now. And, like, we hope that you don't think that you or your past or your diagnosis or anything is any impediment to, like, us wanting you in our life. Because if you do think that, you need to stop it right now. Like, we think yeah. you're amazing. And it's really very sweet. Um, and he gets a little bit verklempt uh, about it. And it's uh, it's really sweet moment. I really like that. And he respects her mom a whole lot. Like, outside of Ava, outside of being Ava's mom, like, she was a big part of his childhood. She's really smart and interesting. And, like, he really likes her. And hearing that from her was, like, big, big for him. Yeah. Um, and so the next morning, Ava is too scared to even look at her phone. And so when her mom comes in to see her, she also has to tell her about everything that happened when she got shot at and all the stuff. Cause Alex was like, listen, I'll let you tell your mom yourself, but like, you are going to tell her, like, you can't just not tell her. So he told her mom, you know, Ava has something she needs to tell you, but maybe give her till Monday kind of a thing, just so that, you know, she couldn't wiggle out of telling her. So she tells her everything that happened and she's like, don't go robot mode, I think, or something. She calls it like when her mom gets really stressed or mad, she like goes in full like, like Android like mode, basically. <laughs> like we're going to be doing things. And yeah. This is the, we're going to be very strategic and straight and no emotion yes. and just, yeah. Um, And so she tells her everything that happened and about why she asked Alex for security and all that. And she's like, she only went to like par partial robot mode. It wasn't as bad as it could have been. Yeah. So later in the backyard, she's hanging out with her sister and she's telling her the same story about everything that happened. And Desmond shows up. Um, and she never did look at her phone. Been, at that point, she had been kind of like, oh, I don't hear anything, but he hadn't shown up yet. And she still hadn't looked at her phone because she assumed that there was a message on there telling her, you know, because no. if he didn't show up by the time, then. <clears throat> um, And so he brings her yellow roses, which are her favorite. And uh, they hang out for a little bit and chat with her parents. And then he's like, oh, I'm going to take her home to her place. And like this whole time, she's like in a sea of like, what the fuckery, basically. Like, she can't believe he's there. She can't believe everybody's acting like this is totally normal. Like, she does not know what to do. So he brings her to her apartment. And she's, like, in a daze the whole time. She Once she gets home, she starts to finally, like, okay, I'm home. Like, I can do things. So she starts to make tea for them. And she feels like she needs to apologize to him for the night before because she's got it jumbled in her head. Like, oh, I, like, like she was blackmailing him. Like, she would out his identity as a hacker if he didn't, like, sleep with her or whatever. And she's like, this is horror, like a horror show. Like, I have to apologize. And, of course, like, none of that is what he thinks. Um, and so he tells her, he takes his sister's advice and tells her, like, I've never had a girlfriend before because of my bipolar. It never felt like it was worth the risk. Um, I've never tried dating. Like, and of course she interprets that as, oh, you're a virgin too. And he's like, no. <laughs> She goes, I did, I did yeah. think that was funny because she was like, oh, okay. I can't you... believe we've neither of us have had sex. And he's like, oh, I've had sex. And she's like, so what? much. He's like, I've had so much. Yeah. But... And, and she's, it's funny because that just shows the ways that she feels differently about sex than him. Because she, at first she's like, what do you mean? Like, how have you had sex if you haven't had a girlfriend? Like, it does not like compute for her. Yeah. Um. And so. The thing that's interesting though, is that. It, she is able to thread the, thread the needle in that she doesn't seem yeah. like she's judgy about it at all. She's yeah. just kind of like, oh, oh, okay. She does like feel that. jealous about it, 
for a minute. And then she's like, I mean, that's not really fair that I feel jealous about this, but like, you know, whatever it is, what it is. But she also doesn't judge him for it. And he kind of says like, you know, could you be with someone who has, you know, who has slept with people without around, having basically. feelings but with yeah. for them and she's kind of like i mean i guess so she's like it doesn't matter yeah and so um then they talk about her dating history and why she's never had sex and um he kind of proposes a deal like they both need help she needs help with sex he needs help with relationships like we can like trade lessons you know and this will be I like i do love educational kissing um and that's kind of they so it's it's yeah. not even like a relationship of convenience it's a like well we'll just trade lessons like mm -hmm. you tell me how to be a good boyfriend and i'll i'll tell you and i'll teach i'll show you, you how to be good at sex and like everybody will be happy and so his they his plan though like he yeah. is kind of like this is my in yeah and then he can tell me she he's yeah. very like she can teach me how to be a good boyfriend to her. Mm -hmm. And then is, when I... Which is all I want to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, so they agree. They pinky promise about it. Um, and and she's like, oh, well, I'll draw up a plan for your... And he's like, no, we're starting right now. And your lesson is first. And he takes off his shirt. <laughs> and she's like, oh, shit. <laughs> like, this is it's going down for real. So um, they head to the Which bedroom. Which is smart of him because I'm pretty sure she was oh, going yeah. to use she was trying to talk herself out of it. To like talk herself out. Yes, absolutely. And so they head to the bedroom. Um, they start getting undressed. She's, of course, nervous. And he sees her fully naked. And he literally like covers up his eyes. And she's like, what's happening? And he's like, oh, my God, you're too beautiful. I need a minute. And she's like... <laughs> tickled to death by this and also it like really relaxes like the anxiety that she was feeling about it which is very cute and um it was he like it like really puts her at ease and 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 it was real like he wasn't like teasing her like oh no, you're too beautiful. he literally really was sweet. like overwhelmed and it was very cute um and so they start messing around and he's talking to her and she's enjoying he does that such it's a good very job hot. of putting her like putting her at ease and making it like sexy but fun yes and, it yeah. was very hot and uh so he gets her off first and then they have sex and of course like it doesn't go as well as he wants it to because he's like too into it <laughs> um but i mean but it's good uh and it's lovely. So sweet. And afterward, they're laying there and she asks him about some of his scars. And he's like, listen, it's kind of a lot like. And he I, I can't remember if he actually says this out loud or if he's just thinking it, but he's like, you know, 10 dump trucks full of anything is too much, even if it's like flowers and not shit or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, it's like it's too much at once. Like, we don't we can't yeah. do this. So they start bargaining like making a deal of he's going to tell her about like four scars a month you know and like it's really cute actually it's um really and sweet. then they're like messing and around some more because also it's like it's almost like that is a promise that he's going to be there for a while which does right. not escape her but yes. it's also just kind of a cute well she's also like sort of scared to trust that but she but she wants it so um and they're they mess around some more but he's like we can't have sex again like you need a couple days to recover like you're you know, you've been, <laughs> been injured, sort of. <laughs> um, and she's she doesn't want to hear that, but he's like, no. Uh, and so um, he goes with her in the morning, along with the, her security detail, to drop her off at work. And then he's taking the train. Um, and Sue is in his ear, giving him shit about being at Ava's all night. She's like, oh my God, are you stalking her again? And he's like, no, I was inside the apartment. And she's like, oh. He's also <laughs> like, I was never, like, he's very, like, I was never stalking. Right. I was surveilling. I was prote and then, protecting. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, she's like, were you? And he's like, no, I was invited. I was inside. I was invited in. And she yes. was like, oh. It's, it's very funny. Um, and so he kind of tells her, like, sort of about the deal that they made and she's like oh yeah i'm so sure like neither of you've gotten married either maybe you need to do that and you, neither of you have had you a kid practice. i guess you could yeah. do that for <laughs> like, it was so cute he's like how about some babies and yeah that way you can practice being parents hilarious um, um and so 
Ava um, at work that morning finds out that the memo that sent her to this meeting with Henry originally did not actually come from her boss. Yeah, and she, she had emailed her boss to be like, hey, you uh, sent me to this nightmare this meeting situation. went real weird. <laughs> and he's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, no, he doesn't know anything about it. What a creepy really fucker is what I wrote in my notes. <laughs> what did you say? I said, what a creepy fucker is what I wrote in my notes about oh, Henry. Well, he like lured you know her there. Do you know what's funny is that I was like, she did all that work preparing for, and it yeah. wasn't even real. Like oh, <laughs> the audacity. Yes. Very rude. Um, and so Des texts her and she's all like hard eyes over it. And he's asking her about like proper boyfriend texting and calling etiquette and stuff like that. It's adorable. Um, and so they're, you know, trading messages all day. And then on her way out of the office, it's raining. And um, Henry pops up as she's walking out of the building and uh, wants to apologize for the unpleasantness <laughs> that happened at his office. And she's like, fuck off forever, basically. Like, I have no interest like, in talking you to you ever me again. in that office. No. <laughs> and he also brought her stuff back. He, like, has a bag that has her, like, jacket and her bag and her phone or whatever in it. And so her security guard gets that. And she's like, tells him in no uncertain terms, like, I never want to see you again. Like, it doesn't matter if it was an accident, if it wasn't your fault, if it was like, I don't care. Like, I don't want to see you again, period. And uh, then Des shows up and like cuddles up to her. And uh, Henry is she, like, well, she, well, he says like, I missed you, which is clearly true. And, but she's like, he clearly has on his himbo persona. Like she recognizes it from the party the other night. And so she's like, oh, okay, we're doing this, right? And so he looks over at Henry and he's like, oh, I just left your office. I didn't know you'd be here. How lucky am I? He says to him, like, so guilelessly as he's, like, cuddling up to the woman that Henry so very clearly is interested in. Yeah. Um, and that is uh, the end of chapter 24. Mm -hmm. So we've made some headway. Things are happening between them. And some of this intrigue is maybe going to pop back up with henry too yeah, and whatever henry going on with back. that so come back next week for the conclusion we'll see you then so many things to wrap up so <laughs> see you next week bye mm -hmm.